Hello guys! Good morning! So the next P for our marketing mix is we have place. So for the place, this is the nature of the business and the type of the product significantly determine the most appropriate place for the business. So for this one, in this particular topic, the most important L that you can um, actually, you need to remember, okay, is location, location, location. Ito yung pinaka-importanting else na kailangan natin when we are trying to look for the perfect place for our business, okay? Now, what are the price that comes with a good or appropriate location? First one is the cost of buying or renting. So, nandyan yung dilemma, would you rather buy the actual location, the commercial space, or rerentaan mo na lang siya? Dito po mapasok yung mga pros and cons. So, for example, if you are there temporarily and you're looking to expand soon, you're just looking for um, a milestone, ganyan, parang stepping stone mo lang siya na parang dito ako for a while and after six months, lipat na ako, then you should only rent that particular space. But if you're looking for it to be a long-term one na parang bibili ka or magre-renta ka na ng isang malaking space because you want that particular space na doon ka na makikilala, yun ay magiging standard mo, yun yung dadayuhin ka ng mga tao, then I think it's appropriate time that you should buy that particular area. Okay? Now, um, dito po mapasok yung lesson natin from the founder. Okay? So, if you're familiar with the founder, if you've already watched that particular movie, it's the story of McDonald's, the franchise, or how it became a franchise. Uh, McDonald's, in general, is not actually um, a burgers and fries business. Okay? It's not a food business or anything. Okay? It's a real estate business. So, what do I mean by that one? It's a, uh, it's a real estate business that... Um, as you can see in the movie, one of the dilemmas that the owner have was hindi malaki yung profits na nagkakaroon siya dahil lang sa renta. Okay, doon napupunta lahat. Doon sa mga rent na binabayad niya, doon sa mga expenses na meron siya. Therefore, doon niya napag-desisyonan, why not I buy this specific location? I offer it to different people as a, a good location for the franchise and then I earn money from that specific location and I earn more than more money then from the stocks na binibigay ko sa kanya. So that's how the business worked for McDonald's. How, that's how they became the number one franchise, the number one food establishment, the number one in the business when it comes to fast food chains. Okay? The second one is customer volume. So this is... Um, Drop-in rates versus your sales conversion ratios. So, when we talk about customer volume, dun sa drop-in rates. The drop-in rate is the percentage of customers, customer traffic, that would stop by the store. Sila yung mga dumadaan to be tingin. Okay? Now, in sales conversion ratios, in that particular percentage, ilan na ngayon yung bibili? Okay? So, ilan dun yung bibili ng mga binibenta mo. So, once they got get to see your products, dun sa mga ina-offer mo, are they going to buy the product? Titing na lang ba nila? Hawakan lang ba nila? It test lang ba nila? Or, there will be actual purchases involved. Okay? So, having said that, um, dito po mapasok ngayon, dun sa mismo location mo, kung marami bang buyers or marami lang um, passerby. Okay? For example, we're talking about um, students as my target market. Saan ba yung magandang location for um, students? Okay? Let's say that my product is rice bowls. Okay? I am offering rice bowls. And where can I find students? Let's say that my idea of that one is I will find them in LRT stations. Because apparently, a lot of you guys are using LRT stations. So, marami dong customer drop-in rates. Marami dong drop-in rates. Maraming dumadaan. Marami yung passerby in that specific location. So, I would put up my stall there and then, what's my problem? Okay? The problem is, in an LRT train, hindi ka pwede magpasok ng pagkain. Okay? That's my biggest problem. Therefore, hindi siya magandang location for me. Why? 
Yes, maraming dumadaan. Pero sila ba ay dumadaan para mag-stop sa'yo at bumili? Or dumadaan lang sila? Okay? LRT station is like a bridge. Parang dinadaanan mo lang siya. You're not actually going to um, stop there, hang out with your friends there. Um, hindi siya parang kubaw station na may... May mall and everything. Pero yung typical na, let's say, uh, Legarda Station. Okay? Hindi ka maglalagay ng pagkain mo doon kasi wala namang bibili. Kasi bawal. Kung quick food ka, why not? Okay. Pero kung kailangan kainin ka, kailangan umupo para doon sa pagkain mo, then, of course, hindi na sila magsustop doon sa pagkain mo. So, do you get it? Is it clear? Okay? So, you need to understand na are the people passing by or are the people um, actually buying products in that location? Okay? Yun naman yung binabayaran mo dun eh. Okay? So, another um, price that comes with the location is the revenue based on the volume and mix of goods and services expected to, to be sold at a certain price and of course, the profits. So, I'll give you um, a one concrete example. So, Let's say Frasati and Car Park. Both of these locations are offering 100,000 as rent. Okay? 100,000 na renta para sa aming mga small businesses. Is it good? Is it bad? What are the pros and cons? So, dito ngayon pumapasok yung is the market okay? Will there be enough sales? Will there be enough profits? Do I have enough um Revenues na makukuha dito. Do I have enough products that I can offer in the market? Let's go to Frasati first. Okay? Frasati is for senior high school. Okay? But right now, it's for grade 11 students only. Okay? It's for grade 11 students. It's for grade 11 faculty members. It's for their staffs, their maintenance, their janitors, their uh, guards. Okay? That's it. Okay, is that a good market? Probably. Okay, is that enough for me? No. Okay, if I would be offering wings, for example, if I would be offering wings in Frasati, yes, let's say, lahat sila bumili sa akin. Okay, but I have to keep in mind that I have different competitors in the area as well. Walang exclusivity na ina-offer dun sa Frasati. Okay, so... Maraming competitors. Maraming dyan yung may baon. marami dyan yung hindi bibili. Okay? mag para lumabas na lang tapos dun bibili. So, lumiliit yung market na meron ako. Now, I need to have enough sales to cover that 110,000. If I am only asking for 70 pesos, 80 pesos, 90 pesos, or 100 pesos per meal, ilan dapat yung mabenta ko kada araw? Okay? That won't be enough. Okay? So, for me, right now, Frasati is not a good location. Right now. Okay? Kasi walang ibang gumagamit ng building na yun, kundi yung grade 11. Okay? The volume for me is not enough. Okay? The next one is car park. Although it's offering the same price when it comes to the rental, Pero dito naman, mas malaki yung market na meron ako. I have the hospital, the doctors, the patients. I also have the students from different colleges that might want to offer or might want to try the food that I am offering in the market. So having said that, mas madali para sa akin to decide on which kind of location or which location should I be going for. So for me, I would go for car park. Okay? Is that clear? Okay, these are just some of the quick thinking na ginagawa ninyo if you're looking for um, the right location for your business. Okay, the next one. The positioning of the business should always match the positioning of the place. Okay, there's no doubt in that. Kaya nga ang una nating tinakal was the positioning. Okay, dito kasi lahat magre-revolve dyan sa positioning ninyo. You need to understand what type of brand am I going for? Am I going for um, a high-class market? Am I going for the middle-class market? I'm going for the low-class market. And then, where should I place my product? Okay, if that's the case, where should I be seen? Okay, saan ba dapat ako nakikita? Ano ba dapat ginagawa ko? What's my channels? What are the distributions that I should be going for? Okay? First factor, right? These are just some of the factors. These are the factors for a good location, 
Okay? First factor is image and location condition. When you're talking about image and location condition, this talks about the physical look, sanitary conditions, and the overall aesthetics of the actual place. Okay? When you look around in the area, will that match your brand? If the answer is no, go find another one. Okay? Because this one, this will help you understand if, let's say, I am a jewelry shop. If I am a jewelry shop, will I go for a divisoria? Will I go for Quiapo area? Of course not. Hey, who am I kidding? Parang sino ba niloloko ko dito? Ano bang gusto mong mangyari dun sa store ko? Ayoko naman that the next day, wala nang pupunta sa akin dahil lang dun sa image, dun sa paligid. Okay? Because of the area that I am in, hindi ako mapasukan ng mga customers na tinatarget ko. Okay? The next one. Where do we find this one? Saan ba natin madalas nakikita si Shell? Sige, take your time. Think about it. Um, saan nyo ba usually nakikita yung mga Shell or gas station in general? Okay. So, for this one, for the gas station, we usually found this near the road. Okay. Nakikita natin to malapit sa mga... Um, Sa mga highway, sa mga daanan, hindi natin to nakikita sa eskinita. Okay? Hindi mo to makikita sa eskinita. Why? Kasi, first and foremost, okay, if your target market are cars, hindi yan kasha sa eskinita. Tao yung kasha doon. Okay? So, you better make sure that people can find you and they can find you easily. Okay? And of course, yung isang gas station mismo, it requires a big space. Okay? It requires a very big space. That's why you have to make sure that you can fit a car inside that particular location. Okay? So, the next one. Next one is exact fit for the target customers. When you're talking about the exact fit for the customers, you are talking about food traffic that is connected to the market. This also helps if the pathways, the intersection, um, also contributes to the business success. So, for example, madali ba siyang puntahan? Will my market quickly find my products, me, dun sa location na yun? Okay? Doon sa mismong location, kailangan mong tingnan kung sino yung mas malapit sa'yo. Okay? Kung um, ikaw ay isang jewelry store, going back to that example, I won't place my store sa Divisoria because I don't have target customers there. Okay? Sino ba yung mga target customers ko? Sa ibang lugar. Okay? So, I have to make sure na mas malapit ako sa kanila, mas accessible ako sa kanila. Okay? So, dun sa food traffic na dadaan sa akin, I have to make sure that the actual passerbys and yung bibili, dun, bumibili dun sa area are part of my, my target customers. Okay? Next is clustering or dispersing of competitors. Clustering of competitor establishments oftentimes results in drawing a bigger market to the location because the competing establishment would or most probably be Offering a wider range of choices and possibly more competitive prices. So, what do we mean by this one? One example could be food court. Okay? Sa isang food court, nandun lahat ng kalaban mo. And yet again, dun ka na pupunta. And yet, dun mo nilalagay yung mismo business mo. Okay? Let's say, um, the one, Tore. Okay? Sobrang daming choices doon. Pero ang dami pa rin nagtatayo ng mga negosyo nila doon. Why? There's clustering. Okay? If there's clustering, nagtitipon-tipon kayo ng mga choices na nandyan. If I were to give you a choice, um, ikaw ba ay pupunta sa isang stand-alone na store, yung yun lang, sasadyain mo siya, or would you go to the mall? A lot of people would prefer to go to the mall. Okay? Kasi nandun, marami ka choices. Marami kang pwedeng gawin, marami kang pwedeng pagpilian. Let's say, puno na si ganitong store, you can go to the next one. Simply because you already have choices. Dun din, nagkakaroon ng competitive prices. You know for a fact that the others are just offering this particular price. So, you cannot offer something that is far different. Doon sa mga in-offer nila. If lahat 89 pesos, hindi pwedeng mag-79 ka, hindi pwedeng mag-99 or 100 pesos ka. Simply because everyone's doing the same thing. 
Okay? Nandun yung pressure sa sa'yo as a business, but at the same time, nandun yung mas maraming hinihikayat silang customers. Pwede yung customer ni store number one, magiging customer na rin ni store number two, dahil lang dun sa maraming choices, maraming alternatives. Okay? Next is neighborhood conditions. So, kanina pinag-usapan natin si um, image and location condition. Now, we're talking about neighborhood conditions. This is um, slightly the same with the first one. Okay? It also includes the aesthetics of the location, safety levels, sanitary conditions, crime situation, but we're talking about on a neighborhood level. Okay? Uh, for example, are you familiar with the yard? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So, for example, dun sa Dayard, nakalagay siya sa Saverville. Okay? Sa Saverville, alam niya na lahat ng taon na naan dun, parte na target market niya. Okay? Alam rin niya that the part, that particular neighborhood matches the aesthetics, the kind of safety level, crime condition, or crime situation, sanitary condition na hinahanap niya sa isang location. Okay? So, tito, uh, kailangan mo lang tingnan, dun ba sa proximity, dun ba sa nearby areas that you have, is it enough for you? Is it okay with you or hindi? Okay? Next is future area development program. So, my example here would be um, Pampanga. Okay? Dito sa future area development. Kasi, apparently, a lot of um, my airport na, sa may clerk, a lot of new establishments, yung tinatayo na rin sa may Pampanga area, okay, parang nilalabas na nila sa Manila area. And that's good. Kasi at least nagde-develop na yung mismo lugar. The location may not have the correct economics in the short run. Like, um, siguro sa ngayon nalulugi ka kasi sumusugal ka, okay? But it promises larger returns in the medium or long term. Okay? Early positioning in the location is sought to be preempt other location, uh, other locators. So, what do we mean by this one? Okay. Sa una, it would be difficult kasi nauna ka dun sa location na yun. Nakuha mo siya ng mura. For example, the land itself is not that expensive kasi nagde-develop pa lang siya. But once it becomes Makati, once it becomes BGC, okay, when it becomes the Tagig, okay, when it's become uh, the Manila of that part, of that particular area, then yung develop na area na yun, nagmamahal na lahat. Okay? Doon ngayon pumapasok yung advantage naman on in the long run. Okay? Maganda na merong promises doon sa may economic growth na mangyayari in that specific location kasi that way, it's easier for you. Uh, mas mura mo siyang makukuha yung isang lokasyon. Although, yun nga, kayo pa lang yung unang magsistart and the development process, nandun pa lang kayo. But, let's say, for example, Maayos na yung kalsada, Naha, naging um, nagkaroon ng bus terminal ng isang airport nearby your area, okay? That's on, in your advantage. Nagiging advantage na yun on your end, okay? Moving on from that one, we have the fiscal and regulatory requirements. For the fiscal and regulatory requirements, we are talking about seek place that has favorable tax rates. Good governance, okay? Excellent infrastructure and great public service. Some places have special regional government permits, different wage or salary rates. Now, we're talking about um, provisions, rules, regulations ng isang lugar. Yung process ng pag-establish ng isang negosyo in Manila is different from Pasig, from Quezon City, from Marikina, from all the other areas. Okay? Magkakaiba kami ng rules, magkakaiba kami ng tax na minamayaran, magkakaiba kami ng lahat. Okay? All processes, although it it offers you the same papers like, uh, for example, we have this one. Okay? Sanitary permit. We have fire safety inspe uh, inspection certificate. Lahat yan i-issue sa amin yan. Okay? Pero magkakaiba ng process yan. You need to seek a place that can be favorable para sa'yo as a business. Huwag kang pipili na isang lugar na hirap na hirap ka makakuha ng permit. Okay? Kasi at the end of the day, you need to follow these regulations. You need to follow these strict requirements and you have to make sure that you are doing your part. Okay? So again, these are examples. Okay? So for that one, 
Okay, moving on from that one. This is the summary of the locations or uh, summary factors in location. So, of course, we have image attraction, exact fit to target customers, clustering or non-clustering of competitors, neighborhood condition, a future area development programs, and physical, fiscal and regulatory policies. So, now, tapos na tayo dun, sa mga factors. Okay? These are the relevant location drivers. Okay? What drives you into going to that specific location? So, these are part of your empirical factors. So, first one. Okay? First one is physical proximity to target market. Pag mas malapit, mas okay. Okay? Pag mas malapit, mas okay yun sa inyo. Okay? For example, ito si SMCT. SMCT is um, Ortigas Pasi. Okay? Pag mas malapit, mas okay. Siya lang yung malapit na SM. So, siya lang yung pupuntahan nila. Okay? For example, uh, from before, um, ang pinakamalapit na mall sa amin was, I live in Dapitan. Okay? I, ang pinakamalapit na mall was SM Manila. Okay? Ngayon, nagkaroon na ng SM sa Lazaro. Tapos, nagkaroon na ng iba't iba pang SM sa mas malalapit na lugar. Okay? Because of proximity, okay? Ideally, the best location should be easily accessible from home or from the workplace. Okay? You are driven to what is more accessible, yung mas malapit dun sa target market. Okay? Next one. Next is customer traffic flow. Higher traffic means higher drop-in rates for stores along the traffic route. So, syempre, kapag mas maraming customers, okay, mas maraming dumadaan, mas malaki yung chances mo na mas marami yung bibili in your store. Okay? You have to make sure na hindi ka pupunta dun sa location kung saan pa isa-isa lang yung dumadaan. Okay? Kasi, um, law of averages. Um... Uh, this talks about na parang, let's say, my average is 10. Sa bawat 10 dumadaan, uh, may isang bumibili. Okay? If that's how you count it. Okay? So, you have to make sure na marami pa rin dadaan dun sa mismong area mo so that it would be easier for you. Okay? Para magkaroon ng mga um, triers, magkaroon ng mga um, new customers, loyal customers for your brand. Okay, next one is industry clustering. Industry clustering, similar businesses co-located in a particular site, draw in a bigger market crowd than if the business were standing alone. Okay, ito yung sinasabi ko kanina. Kung makikita nyo dito, halos magkakatabi ito. Yan, yung mga food establishments na yan, yung mga fast food chains. Palagi silang magkatapat. Okay, kasi pag may clustering, nagkakaroon ng options yung mga tao. Let's say, puno na si McDonald's, let's go to Jollibee. Puno na si Jollibee, let's go to KFC. Okay? So, doon nagkakaroon ng options yung mga tao since there is clustering. Okay? And um, that's one of the tricks na ginawa rin ni McDonald's. I ni mean, Jollibee, rather. Okay? Sa bawat isang McDonald's, dapat may dalawang Jollibee. Okay? That's their technique. Alam nila that Jolly, uh, that McDonald's will drive customers in their store. Okay? So, the technique that they did, ayon na nila mag-market research. Okay? Gusto nila ng quick response to that. Sa bawat isang McDonald's, tayuan natin ng, isa, ng dalawang Jollibee. Okay? It's easier for them to do that because they have the money. Okay? And at the same time, it's a successful plan. Okay? Next, next is convergence of multiple industries, central business districts, commercial centers, shopping strips, and public market magnetized multiple industries, which provide one-stop shop convenience for all customers. So, I'm talking about um, multiple industries in one area. Um, a good example would be Technohub. Are you familiar with Technohub? Okay, comment down below if you're not familiar with that. Okay, um, Technohub, for example, dun sa area nila, may mall na part. At the same time, may mga BPOs, may mga call center na nagtatrabaho dun. At the same time, there are a lot of restaurants. Okay, and in the center of Technohub, palagi silang may mga bazaars. Okay, those are multiple industries in one specific location. 
Okay? Is it good? Depends. Okay? It depends if that is your target market. So, kung target market mo are yung mga nagtatrabaho sa mga ganong lugar, then fine, that's your target market. Okay? Kung hindi naman, hindi talaga yun yung para sa'yo. Okay? So, again, in that particular multiple industries, um, that way, mas madali ka nakakapag-try, nakakapag-test ng products mo. Will I work for, um, let's say, mag-work ba yung product ko for PPOs? To, dun, pwede ko itry. Kasi BPOs yung mga nandun na companies. Okay? So, mag-work ba yung product ko sa this and that? Okay? You can try in different um, industries. Okay? Sa, sa mga malls din, for example, sa mga, I think Robinson's has a lot of this already. Eastwood, for example. Sa Eastwood, um, may mall. Okay? May mga BPOs din. Meron ding mga condos around the area. Okay? That's multiple industries that is converged in one area. Okay? So, it's easier for a lot of people to penetrate in that specific market. Okay? Population concentration. Another factor here is population concentration. Um, this is uh, urbanization creates population centers where people live, goods and services follows. The greater the number of people, the greater the number of needs and wants that are needed to be satisfied. Okay? Kapag mas maraming tao dyan, ibig sabihin mas maraming pangangailangan. Mas marami yung wants na kailangan mo i-fulfill, mas marami yung needs na kailangan mong punan. Okay? So, you have to make sure that in that particular concentration, will you be able to create the demand from them and then supply that particular demand. Again, because of population concentration, okay, mas dumadami yung needs and wants in that specific area. Okay? Next is activity hubs. Activity hubs such as large schools, high-rise buildings, public parks, transportation terminals, and entertainment centers provide good location potential for food establishment and client-specific services. Now, what do I mean by this one? Usually, kapag nearby ka sa isang activity hubs, okay, mas malaki yung potential mo for a good successful location. Okay, let's say, nilagay mo yung food mo, food uh, business mo, doon sa isang park, mas malaki yung chances mo. Nilagay mo siya sa katabi ng isang malaking school, mas malaki rin yung chances mo. Okay, um, kapag nilagay mo siya malapit sa isang high-rise na building, sa labas ng mga, uh, ng mga corporate uh, company, sa may Makati, sa may BGC area, okay, mas malaki yung chances mo na magkakaroon ka ng mas profitable Okay, na business. Kasi again, there is activity hubs na mas malapit sa'yo. Okay? Um, this one, okay, I, I am going to give uh, Cafe Tomas, for example. Cafe Tomas, uh, nahirapan kami sa paghahanap ng location yan. And yet again, we don't have the best location. Okay? We don't have the best location in terms of proximity when it comes to all of the factors that I've given a while ago. Okay? But this one is a good example for that one. Okay? Um, nung namimili kami ng lokasyon, we were thinking, will we go for the Pitan, Lacson, Espanya, or Noval? Okay? Doon sa four corners ng USD. Saan kami ngayon pupunta? Okay? Ngayon, um, napili namin ang Noval because of this example. Okay? Um, Lock... Lakson, for example. Lakson, hindi siya ganun kaganda before. Um, hindi maganda yung lights, um, dangerous, tapos usually mga dorms and condos na lang yung mga nandun. Okay? Right now, it's booming. Right now, it's developing. So, maganda na siyang pasukan ng mga negosyo ngayon. Okay? Um, pero, again, sino ba yung primary market mo? Ang primary market mo na nandun is um, yung school, yung high school na nandun, and yung um, hospital. If hindi ka nila nakita, hindi yan mag-work. Okay? Next one is Espanya. What's my problem with Espanya? My problem is, tatawid pa yung tao. Okay? Tatawid pa yung tao para lang makakain dun sa mismong uh, food chain mo. So, ayoko nun. That's another friction. Your goal is to lessen all types of friction when it comes to your market. 
yung ma-eliminate mo yung decision making na ginagawa nila as much as possible. Okay? Next one is the Pitan versus Noval. Okay? The Pitan before was good. It's a very good location. No nagsara yung mga um uh, uh inuman doon, yung mga um uh, yung maraming pinasara si Isko. Uh, marami na rin yung naluging business doon. So, hindi na siya nag-work. So, fortunately for us, uh, we chose Pinoval. Okay? Kasi apparently, in Pinoval, nandun yung mga dorms na malalaki, nandun yung mga activity centers, and in Noval, dito mas malapit kami sa mas malalaking schools. Okay? Such as UST, nandun yung gate agad. Okay? And nandun din yung mga iba pang uh, kasama sa U-Belt area, such as um, FEU, okay, malapit sila, or mga nagdodorm naman sila dun sa may Noval area, which is also an advantage for us. Okay? So, when you're looking for um, location drivers, look for um, a location kung saan may malapit kang pagkukuhanan ng market mo. Okay? Pagkukuhanan na, let's say, you're not my target target, but you can be my target audience. Okay? Next is growth potentials. Can you place a startup in this uh, particular mall? Okay? This particular mall. So, tingin mo, okay pa ba na mag-start ka ng business dyan? The answer there is no. Because the place had already reached its maximum growth for mall development. Ito yung sinasabi namin pagkapag over-saturated na yung market. Siksikan na kayo dyan. Masyado ng marami yung establishments na nandyan para pumasok yung hindi kilalang establishment. Okay? If I am in SM North, tapos nagtayo ako ng negosyo doon, tapos hindi ako kilala, it would be difficult for me to penetrate in the market. Okay? Simply because, again, it already reached its maximum growth for mall development. Okay? Let's say I choose another location. Overly saturated na ba? Lahat ba ng tao doon nag-offer ng wings? Lahat ba ng tao doon nag-offer ng kape? If the answer is yes, then I need to move on to another place. Okay? Kasi hindi mo kaya makapagsiksikan doon sa mga established na. Okay? Now, this is the summary of your relevant location drivers. Again, we have physical proximity to target market, customer traffic flow, industry clustering, convergence of multiple industries, population concentration, activity hubs, and growth potential. So, summary for our marketing mix. Nasa place pa lang tayo, guys, ha? This is the price that comes with location. We also have factors of location from image attraction to physical fiscal regulatory um, policies and we also have the relevant location drivers from physical proximity to growth potential okay so for the next one is na rin to sa isang mahaba na namang discussion another long discussion we will have promotion see you again next time bye guys